Oh, oh, I'm here to talk to you about uh, overtraining athletes. Uh, my uh, opponent, I mean, this is the original claim. The amount of physical training for athletes is counterproductive for their future health and wellness. My rebuttal to that is the amount of physical training for professional athletes is necessary for the physical conditioning and recovery periods. Here's your original supporting claim number one. Overtraining athletes become injured most. And then to support that, they say, what well, begins as a small nagging ache and pain can grow into a debilitating injury if it isn't recognized and treated early. Without rest, the body can't recover, which causes injuries. Well, that's a fact. Overtraining athletes do become injured most. Dr. Kayton, who has written textbook chapters on the condition, cautions that overtraining is quite rare, though. So for a regular athlete to train on a professional level, it's, you're, not, you're just not going to see it that often. He even goes as far as saying, 20 miles is nothing. Talk to me when you're running 50 miles a week. If you're a runner and have a steady history of running 40 to 70 miles a week, you're now pushing 80, 90, 100 miles a week, and your times are drug, dropping, and you feel sluggish, then I'll start to listen. Dr. Steve Kenton, Director of Preventive Cardiology at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit. The original, they're uh, supporting claim number two, athletes perceive less effective, quick recovery. My supporting counterclaim for that is professional athletes pursue the most effective and quickest recovery, not the less effective quick recovery. In an article, Why Do Pro Athletes Recover Before You Do? from the Washington Post, 2013. Take an NBA game season game last season between the LA Lakers and the Atlanta Hawks. Kobe Bryant was pushed in midair and he landed with a thud on the court. Clutched his ankle and ripped in pain. A few hours later, after X-rays found no broken bones, his coaches announced he was in out indefinitely with a bad spring. Yet 36 hours later, Bryant was back in the court. Did he have a miraculous recovery? <clears throat> Not necessarily. While professional athletes are in terrific shape, which helps when they get injured, they also have the advantages rarely available to the weekend warrior. An instant medical response and a physical therapy regimen that kicks in quickly, that operates practically around the clock, and that continues even after the athlete is back in the game. This is uh, Benjamin Schaefer, orthopedic surgeon who is head team physician for the Washington Capitals and assistant team physician for the Washington Wizards. Most of the time, the pros get a prompt assessment and treatment by experienced trainers, and what may take a recreational athlete weeks to recover from may take the pro only a matter of days. So as a matter of fact, professional athletes pursue the most effective and quick recovery. It's just they have the resources available to them. And for their support in Chem 3, they said TBIs cause degenerative brain disease, such as Alzheimer's, dementia, Huntington's disease. In fact, NBA, NHL, they all have concussion policies, which means concussions are very common. Well, my claim to that is, well, TBI certainly cause degenerative brain disease. The earth is round, it orbits around the sun, traumatic brain injuries cause degenerative brain disease. The sky's blue, water's wet. Is there really an argument there? You get hit across, you know, head with a bat, yeah, there's going to be some damage. So that's not really an argument. So to recap, or to recap the rebuttal, is the amount of physical training for professional athletes is necessary for their physical conditioning and recovery periods. Overtraining athletes do become injured most, as Dr. Carrington said, you know, conditions that, however, condition is quite rare. Professional athletes pursue the most effective and quickest recovery. Like I said, Benjamin Schaefer, most of the time pros get prompt assessment treatment by experienced trainers and may take only a couple days versus a couple weeks. And trying to bring this Brain injuries cause degenerative brain disease.
Okay, Modesto, uh, the topics identified, uh, it sounds to me like you were kind of shifting the argument a little bit at the beginning, and uh, that seems like a good strategy because most of the discussion is really focused on uh, professional athletes, and I think you want to point out that the advocate's own uh, material was really focused on professionals as well, and that justifies the argument that you're making that says that they've ignored a lot of the considerations that professional athletes are faced with. Uh, on your first point, it really seems to be focusing on uh, running. That's your example that you've got for that uh, particular illustration. The quote is a little bit rushed. It's conclusionary. I got the feeling that you went through that first point so much quicker before uh, we even realized what the issue was that you were responding to than all of the other points because they were much more clearly signposted and I thought you had a clearer explanation. You're trying to let the evidence here make the argument for you instead of your making the claim and you want to explain what the claim is and then give us the citation of the evidence. It just felt like you rushed the evidence, present it, and then move on. And um, the evidence by itself doesn't make the inference. You have to make the inference. Obviously, the evidence is going to be an important part of whether or not you accept the conclusion, but we have to understand what the conclusion is from the beginning, and we're going to have to, uh, looking at this first point, it just feels like I'm going to have to read the evidence in order to figure out what your argument was on that. I thought you were in better shape, though, on the second point, and that is that uh, there's a differential between... Um, the average person and professionals because of the kinds of uh, access they have to um, recovery. That there's a reason that these this difference, it's not, it's not that they look for the fastest, uh, quickest, least effective recovery, it's that they look for the most effective quick recovery and then you've got a, a couple of good examples there. Um, the uh, Kobe Bryant illustration I think works really well. You have the same tendency in the presentation here that I think uh, makes your speech less effective than it should have been. It should be a lot more effective, and that is that you're doing a lot of reading and you're rushing while you're reading. Stop, talk to us, look at us, tell us what the argument is, explain the concept, give us the response, make your claim, and then present your evidence and you're going to be better off. It just seems like I think you've got the right arguments in the issue. I think they're not as clearly presented as they need to be. Yeah, it, it, it's, and it's mostly, mostly it's uh, a couple of things, timing and the, and the declarative sentences of your counterclaims. They need to be a little bit sharper. All right, um, on the third argument, you've got this dismissal argument basically it comes down to, this is a fact, so what, you know, water is wet, the world's round, and let's move on. But what does that mean to the argument? First of all, it means there's no dispute on this issue, so I'm not going to challenge the premise here. The, but the bigger question is, why is this presented here? Is there any discussion about what uh, the advocate, in the advocate's argument about how people try to manage their recovery from concussions, that they do, in fact, do these things in a particular way? If they didn't make any of those arguments, then your response is particularly appropriate. There's no inference from the advocate on this particular point. All they've done is present information that says uh, concussions are dangerous. Yes, they are. Nobody's going to dispute that. The question is, how do people respond to those concussions? And you've got an answer here which says all of the major sports have new or have recently developed policies on concussions to try and address these very issues. But that argument gets lost because you're focusing on the obviousness of there not being any dispute of the um, you know, fact that concussions are dangerous and not focusing on what the inference is that's supposed to be made here. There's a challenge about whether or not it's relevant. And if it is relevant, then you've got an answer to it, which is that there are policies in place that try to reduce that. And you could show for it, it wouldn't be hard to find an example of how those policies have been more effective or that they have kept people, uh, be, you know, they're careful about getting people back in the game, so on and so forth. I don't know. I'm sure there are plenty of examples out there. Uh, I don't remember. You know, people are always getting their clocks cleaned in the NFL and they're out for a game or two. And, you know, they're not in five minutes later like they were once upon a time. They are out for 
whatever the policies are, they've got, an, uh, they've got a sideline assessment that they do, they've got a medical assessment they do after that, there are mandatory uh, periods of time that they are uh, required to rest, you know, they get another assessment before they go back in. Nobody's disputing that they're dangerous. The question is, do they try to address this without addressing those dangers? And you've got a good argument that says that they, they don't. They, they're very careful about these kinds of things, but that gets lost because you're doing the other thing. All right, thank you.